my friends. Santosh was speaking about the communitarian dimension of uh, our life, especially in this year, as we are preparing for the bicentennial of our congregation. I present before you some of my reflections in the Advent leading up to the great feast of Christmas. And that is, I would begin with Nietzsche, the great philosopher, uh, to some of us a little negative. In his negative philosophy, he would speak about others being hell and there is no exit and you come before me as a block to everything that I want to be. But then there is the brother, a Jewish brother of our Jesus, Emmanuel Levinas, who would speak about the the face-to-face -face encounter between human beings, which he takes as the foundation of uh, ethical relationship, ethical ethical foundation of life. And it is from that kind of a thought I would want to begin my reflection. I, looking at the entire story of Christmas, would reflect on three points. First of all, there is this ethical boundary that we are not supposed to cross. Secondly, there is the relational border, the relational borders that we are always invited to cross, crisscross as we live our lives. And then some ambiguous interpretations that we will come to see at the end of our reflection. <coughs> First of all, there, is the, there are these ethical boundaries which we are not supposed to cross. First of all, there is our friend Zechariah, to whom the angel comes with a great message. And then he has this kind of a doubt and question in his person he was not supposed to cross. But he crossed the boundaries and he was punished. Of which we will speak at the end when we are dwelling on the, the ambiguous interpretations. Secondly, there is Herod, our friend, who would cross every ethical boundary and then bring, upon, bring misery upon uh, uh, a few families and the whole society as a whole. So we would see, even from the point of view of Christmas and in the Advent season, that there are ethical boundaries that we are not supposed to cross. It is like Mariada ki rekha, jo sita ne paar ki thi aur wapis nahi That is the ethical boundaries that we are talking about. We are not able to come back and then we will sow misery around the world. But then we come to look at the relational borders. So there is a difference between the boundaries that we are not supposed to cross and the borders that we are always invited to cross. The borders that we are invited to cross begin with that border that was crossed between heaven and earth. When the word decided to become flesh, as the hymn of the Philippians would say in Paul, he discarded everything and he did not consider his equality something to be retained, but he emptied himself, crossed the borders of heaven and came to the earth to be among us. And that word, which some of us, even when he was walking around, were not able to understand, is 
to be related to. And then, that is an invitation for us to cross our boundary, to make that boundary, that border, thin, in order to come in contact with that word, and then that word came to be with us in order to look at us close quarters, even to experience who we were. Was not God able to experience what we were so that he was, he intended, he decided to take the form of a servant like us? If he intended, if he decided to come down to be like us and to be one among us, how far are we invited to get to the borders and cross it to relate to one another? And that is the first invitation that he gives us in this Advent season running up to the great feast of Christmas. Second, we have the angels crossing their heavenly borders coming to these simple-minded people or uh, people of goodwill with their peace, with their message of peace. But, once again, when the angels cross the borders and come to us with these kinds of uh, message, only those people who are of goodwill will be able to have this peace experience. Those who have complexities felt in their hearts, who, who, whose relationships are complex, will not be able to feel this peace that the Prince of Peace has brought, as Isaiah would tell us. Like those who received the angel's message, we are invited to be simple in our relationship, not complex, not simple as imbeciles, but in, in, in contrast to the complex uh, uh, personalities that we might be. And so, uh, Fulton P. Sheen would tell you in his great uh, um, um, orations that the people who were able to relate to this simple little child were these shepherds. Soft-minded shepherds who were able in, his, in their supple nature bow down and enter this manger. But there were friends, the Pharisees, the chief priests and the scribes with their great sashes, efforts and heaviness were not able to bow down and enter the manger and then find this Prince of Peace. And that is the case that uh, Jesus would experience even in his public ministry. So, there is an invitation for us to cross the borders from heaven to the earth in the angels. Now come to the shepherds who cross the borders of their grassland to come to the manger and to have the, the, the ecstasy of looking at the Prince of Peace. And there they were able to do that because they were able to decipher even in their ignorance and illiterate state that there was something in the offing that would bring them some kind of happiness, elation and ecstasy. And that is what they felt in their crossing of their fields, the grasslands, into the village or the border of the village where perhaps the manger situated where the Prince of Peace was born. Then again, there, is, there are these Magi, the wise men, who crossed the borders of the eastern regions to come to Jesus. They crossed. Now, in their crossing of their borders, what we need to understand is that these people, were able to look at something that 
the entire hemisphere, the star was visible too. But then the question that I have for these wise men during this advent is how many of those people to whom the star was visible, half of the earth, the star would have been visible, the, the entire hemisphere, it would have been visible, but then only a few who would wake at night and gaze into the sky would see the stars. That one star. Now, even if we are awake at night, how many of us would look into the skies? And then, how many of us look into the sky and see, hey, hey, that star was not there yesterday. Well, the sky was yesterday just as it is today, and it will be tomorrow for all of us. But then, it takes some kind of uh, um, gumption to look at the differences in the skies as we would look at the differences in the nature. And then, even if we have deciphered the movement of the stars and then the difference in the skies, how many of us would understand it? How many of us would be willing to go and study the movement of the stars? And how many of us would be willing, having studied it, to set out during the night, guided by the stars, to go to cross the borders and come into a place where the Prince of Peace lay peacefully. This is the invitation that these wise men would give us. And then we will speak about the wise men later as we are <coughs> reflecting on the ambiguous interpretations. Having received the word of God, Mary would cross the, the borders of Judea into, uh, 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 from Galilee into Judea. Nobody told her to go there. The angel never told her to do that. She had all the right to keep her little baby that has just been conceived safe. It was not mm, mm, very easy for her to make this journey, crossing the borders. But then, there was something that she received kept her doing that, crossing the borders. And then, with this crossing the borders by Mary, she would invite us to cross the borders to others who are in need. Because there is always, there are always those who are in need of us and the presence, our presence, with the child in our hearts would be able to quicken the children in others, in their hearts, but also make them break into singing. And that is the invitation that Mary gives us. And then, look at the psychological borders that Joseph had to crisscross. First of all, there was this, this, this immense doubt that was generated in his mind on the perceived infidelity of Mary. And then that wouldn't be a, 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 a border that any man with manliness in him would cross. But then Joseph had to cross that, that psychological barrier and border in order to care for Mary, her person, and the person who is to come, the <coughs> Prince of Peace. This might be for all of us friends, the greatest border, greatest and widest and most difficult border that we are invited to cross, the psychological borders. Now, Having crossed that border, Joseph had still to cross several borders. The border of fear, which is not unfamiliar to us. 
the border of fear that we confront on a daily basis, Joseph had to cross. And then he had to make many other crosses. Friends, Christmas and Advent season is a time when we think of these borders and then crossing these borders, making these borders thinner and thinner, we come closer to each, each other. And then the proximity that we have with each other might be lessened. The distance would be lessened in such a way that we know each other better, that we respect each other better, and we carry that little one that we have received in our hearts to each other. And then that is when the, the, the jubilation is there. That is when Mary's would break into songs and Elizabeth's would feel that quickening of that child in everyone. Crossing of the borders. And finally, we come to that ambiguous interpretations that we confront during these this Advent season running up to the great feast. First of all, there is your friend Zacharias. Now, he had a few doubts and then he expressed it. And we are invited to express our doubts, clarify uh, um, the, 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 the problems that we have uh, um, rising in our minds from time to time, but then the poor man is punished. Now, I look at myself in my status, in my age, in the place I work, and the people before me. Or take, taking all these into consideration, I find that he was a venerable old man, having known the scripture, and was a priest, having prayed for himself and for others, being in that holy of holies, should have come to know that the person who is giving the message is someone who is trustworthy, but still he was making these questions that were generated by the doubt in his heart. And then the most important impediment that he had was that as a childless person, he had been praying for a child for perhaps umpteen years for the last many years. But then, when the answer to that, those prayers were made, when his prayer was heard, he was unable to believe. And that is my problem. That is my personal problem. I pray and pray and pray, never meaning it. And when, the Lord answers it. I wonder, did I even pray for that? That perhaps is the reason that we have here of an ambiguous interpretation of the response that Zachariah made. And then the second ambiguous interpretation comes from the wise men. I consider myself wise, and then, at the final analysis, I would know that I am a fool. <clears throat> Matthew tells us that they were wise. They were leading <coughs> into the skies and nature. But then, they were not able to decipher the sign that was presented to them by God. What was given to them in the sign was that they would find the Prince of Peace, the, the, the no love, uh, the newborn king of the Jews. 
Now, right from the beginning, we have the star guiding them up until they came to Palestine. And then, in the headquarters of Herod, they came. Now, this is my problem. Friends, ambiguous interpretations. God is guiding me, and I know that. But then, from time to time, my human reason sets in. And I tap into my human reason, and then abandon the sign that is given by God. My personal problem, the ecclesial <coughs> problem that I am in, is very much related to this sign tracking given the signs that are given by God are abandoned and then human reason takes off then. Now, the, 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 the greatest predicament in the sight of the sign that is always there, I take recourse to my own reason, abandoning that sign that is given by God. <coughs> now, once I take recourse to my own reason, Abandoning the sign that is provided by God, only misery would be there. And that is perhaps why they abandoned the sign, God-given sign, the heavenly sign, and then went, deviated into the palace of Herod. And then they had a rendezvous with Herod. And then from that Herod came to know that a new king was going to be born, and then comes the massacre of the innocents. <laughs> every abandoning of the heavenly sign and every deviation that I take with my own reason, without any positive relationship, positive reference to the, the, the heavenly sign, I bring misery. Personally and ecclesially, socially, in a communitarian manner. Friends, in conclusion of this reflection, I learned that there are ethical boundaries that we are not supposed to cross. There are plenty of uh, relational borders that we are invited to crisscross. And then there are interpretative ambiguities in life that we need to tread very carefully because the relationship or the borderline between the border and the boundary sometimes would be very thin for us even to understand. As we are nearing the great feast of Christmas, let us rise and cross these borders. The borders that we have neglected so far, cross these borders, get to know each other, come into relationship with each other. Let us renew these relationships. Cross the borders into Judea, meet a few Elizabeth, meet a few Josephs, and then bring the happiness, the merriness of Christmas into their life. May songs be sung from the angels, may songs be sung that are prophetic from Mary's, and that our Christmas might be far more meaningful than those Christmases that are past work. May God bless all of us. Christmas blessings to all of you and Merry Christmas. Thank you.